Hello guys, welcome back to the Final Fantasy 7 playthrough that I am now doing uh, with the new threat 1.4 mod. And as usual, I am your host Fuzzfinger, I will be taking you through this episode today. So, we finished off last time having recruited Ares, and once again I would say that this is not a playthrough of the original Final Fantasy 7. I have done that playthrough in a 50 episode walkthrough series which takes you through the entire game of the original game, and I'll put a link to that in this video description. So if that's what you're after, if you're playing through the standard version of Final Fantasy VII, then go and check that out. You probably don't want to be here. Uh, because this is made for veterans, uh, this mod and this uh, playthrough, in fact, I will be skipping out lots of the story. Once again, go and check out my original playlist if you want to really follow the story along. That's not what this series is about. This is seeing how the new threat mod really improves, if you like, on the original game, or at least changes it uh, and, and makes things feel new for us again. So one of the things that you may have noticed there and then, right off the get-go, is that the cover material that you can usually collect uh, outside of Ares' home has actually now been replaced by a morph material. Now normally the morph material isn't introduced into the game until much later on, on disc 2. But now we have it early on and we are going to be making use of it because we can morph pretty good items from the enemies now as we go through the game. And I'll just give you an example of that here. So, of course the way morph works is it does a small amount of damage, but if it kills the enemy that it's cast on, then there's a good chance that they will turn into an item. And you can of course carry on stealing if that's what you prefer to do, there are also items to steal. But we'll go ahead and I did morph a few of these. I'll just show you that last one. We get a Vampire Fang which drains hit points out of the enemy that it's cast on. So not too shabby. And once again due to the somewhat relatively low experience that enemies are providing. It's not really good enough uh, anymore to, to grind in the early part of this game which is basically to help with the tuning so that you don't overpower the bosses and whatnot as we go forward. So here we have quite a famous section coming up which hasn't changed much in the new threat mod since it is mainly just story section uh, going through this part which is where we want to find out what Tifa's up to. She seems to be dressed up uh, a little bit uh, on the well I'll leave that to your imagination side of things, but we're going to go and find out exactly what's happening. So we're going to head through the promiscuous village of Wall Market and head to Don Corneo's mansion here, where of course we are informed that only the cute ones can get in to see the Don, which excludes Cloud from the off. So of course Ares comes up with the somewhat novel idea of dressing Cloud up as a pretty girl in the hopes of confusing the Don enough to let them both in in order so that, in order for them to find Tifa. That's the plan. It'll be hugely interesting to see how this translates into the remake version of the game. Uh, since, yeah, in 2D sprites and that, it, it's very funny and it works. It's overly stupid. But in the full 3D... Uh, updated graphical release that's going to be coming out on PS4. This section of the game, without trying to be too offensive, has the potential to be absolutely overly ridiculous. But we'll see how it turns out, in all honesty. Uh, anyway, if you collect the optional pieces of the outfit, as I have done, then hopefully, if all goes well, Don Corneo should choose Cloud to be his girl, which gives the most humorous result. Again this hasn't changed at all from the original version of the game which is why I skipped most of the wall market section out. You can of course uh, go and check the original videos if you want to know what goes down with that. And there we go, Cloud gets chosen. And I don't think Cloud's going to want to come to Daddy, in all honesty. So we'll start pushing this guy for information, which is actually what Barrett was trying to do earlier on, if you follow the story along. 
since he seems to know, Don Conea seems to know some things that are going on with the Shinra for various reasons which he explains to us. And in come the girls and down they all go into the sewer. And now we get introduced to the Shinra really for the first time and some of the uh, key members of the Shinra that are involved in that evil organisation. So here we have Heidegger, the not so skinny guy walking in, President Shinra behind his desk of course, and Reeve here. They're all talk talking about the destruction of Sector 7 that they're about to bring about. And Reeve's not too pleased about that. Uh, there's a new save point here, which I recommend you use before speaking to the ladies. As soon as you've spoken to the ladies, you are thrust into battle with Elp's big ugly brother? No, father. It's Elp's senior. Apps, sorry, I don't know what's calling him Elp's. Apps even. Apps senior. And he has the same kind of wave attack as he does in the original game, the difference here being it doesn't do any damage to him. So you are going to have to do all the damage yourself, although it does still do more damage to your party if it comes from the back rank. So just bear that in mind. Now he has quite a nasty 4000 health, which does take a lot of effort to get down, so make sure you start by uh, protecting your party with barrier and magic barrier and something by the way I, I don't think I've mentioned before is that Ares comes equipped with the restore rod which basically means her attacks do not do damage they heal the character they inflict the staff upon so definitely a nice little added bonus Ares is certainly seen as the white mage character in this mod you pretty much only want to be using her for healing and buffing and debuffing so, I don't know if I show the uh, attack with the staff here. I might have cut that bit out in the edit. But it does work well. Also, I'm not sure if this guy bugged out a little bit. But for some reason, he only decides to attack Ares towards the end of the fight. Literally about 15 times in a row, he just used his tail attack on her. And what I was doing here was trying to see if you could morph bosses in this mod. Since it was my first chance to really try and figure that out. I didn't expect that you would be able to, and it certainly seems that you can't, since the boss just died normally. But that fight is quite challenging, so make sure you save before you try it. Don't use a tent afterwards, because you're healed by default anyway. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this uh, episode. So thanks for joining me, guys. Don't forget to hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. And come back later as we perhaps continue on with this playthrough. But let me know in the comments section if you think that's worth doing. Cheers, guys. Bye for now.